safest way to shear the animal um, for their safety and our own. Um, I was saying earlier we do shear llamas standing up because there's a way of doing those but alpacas all right, good girl. Alpacas have leg fibre on them as well as the back fibre um, and they don't like their legs touched quite often they're very sensitive on their legs and if you've got one standing there and we're trying to shear it and it starts jumping about well either the person holding it's going to get hurt i'm going to get hurt or the animal because i have got a set of blades normally in my hand that will cut the people think they've got guards on they don't it's physically it could be a serious accident so by stretching them out i can get get them nice and tight it's easy to shear around and hopefully we don't have any accidents as well occasionally we do catch them and they do get little nicks on them but it does happen but very rarely hopefully we've got a good shearer um, this animal hasn't been sedated in case anyone's thinking crikey that is calm um, they don't always lay there they lay there calmly once they're shackled down but we do often find they do scream and they do scream quite a lot sometimes and it's not because they're getting hurt it's just a, a reaction thing they do and they do spit I mean, people say, do the alpaca and llama spit? Yes, they do. They don't spit very often at all. Um, those two llamas there, we've got a young llama and an older one, they're most commonly known for spitting and kicking. And I say I shear alpacas and llamas, the first person people say to me, will they spit and kick? Well, they do, but they don't. I've, in 13 years of shearing alpacas, I've probably only ever been spat at five times, and I mean properly. And there's you. You get alpacas spit at each other as a pecking order and they just give out a light spray spit. It's nothing serious. If an alpaca really spits at you, you lot wouldn't be standing there now. They would actually cover you at that range. So they can really spit if they want to. Kicking, they only generally kick when something touches their back legs and they just react to it. Um, no different to if somebody suddenly touches you from behind and you can turn around and give them a clout. But so they do occasionally do it and occasionally we do get kicked but it's nothing any of any major problem so while we've got the animal shackled down normally i have a shearing plant here that would be here with the shearing we're not shearing now because it's too late in the season or it's got too late in september we start shearing in april or i do in switzerland i then come back here and we shear from the end of april beginning of may right through to august um, some people like them shorn early, some people like them shorn later. Um, in the heat, you know, this year it was a cold in May and people were hesitating shearing. Um, but it's um, a good time to um, get the coats off for the summer. Now the reason we also want, we want to get the saddle of the animal, the back of the fleece is the best part of the fleece and we want to keep it separate from the legs and the neck. The legs is like a second quality. The neck is good quality, but it never grows as long as the saddle, so it's shorter, so we cast that as a second as well. But by shearing them down on the table, we can, as we shear them, we can separate the fleece apart and bag it separately. If we were shearing them standing up, you end up with fleece all in a pile and a mess and it all gets contaminated. So, oh, this is nice. oh, we didn't let her go in the pen early enough. So, we will shear those as we go. Now, also while they're on there, we'll trim their feet if they need their feet trimmed. Um, as you can see, they're partially cloven. They're not like sheep fully cloven. They have a hard pad here, which they walk on, and they've got a little claw on the end, which is where we would trim if it needed trimming. And she doesn't need doing. She's got nicely warm feet. Um, they're very good in the winter when it gets wet. They do get very soft, but they never seem to become lame alpacas. They've, those feet are very hard packed. 
So while we've got the animal on there, we'll do the feet, we'll give them a shear, and we also do their inoculations, an annual inoculation, their vaccination. Um, they'll get that quite often at the same time, and we will worm them as well. It's a perfect time, the animal's pinned down, we can give it a full MOT, and we also do the teeth, which we'll show you in a second. Um, now, if there's any questions on the way through, don't be frightened of shouting out and asking. Um, there's often lots of questions that I will miss. So, we're going to just gently bring this one over. Look, everyone's watching you. Look, see, look. Oh. Very relaxed animal. Just roll her over. There we go. Oh, dear. Now, there you go. So, then we would shear that side, roll the animal over, and we can shear the other side. Oh, we can go to sleep again. All right. Now, this animal is very relaxed. We're very lucky to use this as a demonstration one. You all right? Um, now, let's show them the teeth, right? So, anyway, she's smiling at you all now. Um, now, the teeth, as you can see, is a bottom set. I'm just going to open her mouth slightly. And on the top is a very hard pad. And they graze with that. Um, they don't have a top set of teeth. Now, if those teeth happen to grow up past the top of the pad, which sometimes it does, um, we actually will just quickly trim them down or just tidy them up if they need it. If they're eating a, a harsh grass, a hard grass, like they would out in the Andes, up in the mountains, their teeth wear better. Here we can get it, they might be eating hay or chewing the bark, it all helps to wear their teeth down. Um, but we have a lot more softer grass in the UK that we're feeding animals, they're grazing on a lot of softer grass, so they tend to sometimes grow a bit more. Now, Trevor chap asked me about teeth earlier. Now, when they get to three years of age, they will shed their milk teeth, as they will be classed, and they produce a new set of teeth. So quite often we will find a new set coming out, uh, up, and the old set getting pushed out. Occasionally they don't fall out, so we do help them if they need it. Now, this is a female, but the males actually produce fighting teeth. And what that is, is they have a set of teeth up in the top of the mouth that further back and the bottom, but at three years old they come through and they're like shark's teeth, they are razor sharp and I'm not joking when I mean razor sharp and the reason they have those is because when they fight each other they try and castrate each other by biting your hair, oh, enjoy. and they try and rip their underneath to take the testicles off or their thistles. Which is a very pleasant. So while we're shearing, we will quite often remove the fighting teeth to save any aggravation. Or even just general fighting, they wrestle fight with their necks. It's no different to two deer fighting with stags with antlers, but they use their teeth. So, um, But we take them out. One is we take them out for our own purpose, because if we stick our fingers in there, they often come out bleeding. So when we deal with llamas, specifically, we have had the old llama that has tried to bite us, so we do quickly remove those. But it's generally only in the entire males. If they're castrated before they're three years old, the fighting teeth will not establish. They will be like a female, they're a he she, and they don't have, they might have little buds, as it were, and little teeth that come through, but not of any damage. You've gone to sleep with me, haven't you? <laughs> this is a cool alpaca, actually. Um, um, so that's what we're going to say. Llamas we do standing up because trying to knock a llama over when it's fully sized onto this table would take a couple of big strong blokes. Um, but those two have actually had their saddles shorn off. They haven't had, got their necks on and their bottoms, as it were. They just had a barrel shear. Um, they're quite happily eating hay, a lot more relaxed. And as you see, a lot of people can't tell look at the baby llama or the baby alpaca. There is a baby one running around somewhere. Uh, this is a, she's three now, this one, four. This is a four-year-old, so it's a full-size alpaca. They've got a full-size llama and a young 18-month-old llama, who will double in size, hopefully, next year. And a very sleepy llama, alpaca. Now, does anyone have any questions? Silence is good, but it's not so good. No questions at all. Fleece. Uh, a quick bit of fleece. It can be worth up to... 10 to 25 pound a kilo, if you're lucky, on very good quality animals. Um, these animals will cut two to three kilos of fleece off a good animal. Now, as someone did say earlier, if as they get older, 
and they do live up to some of them asking that question, see? They live up to 20 years, I've done some 24 year olds, um, alpacas and llamas, um, but they live a good age over in this country, but after 15, we tend to not share them maybe every year. We might leave them every other year because they, their fleece doesn't grow, it does slow down. So if we've got an older animal, with it, well, it's going to have a hard winter, we might as well leave the fleece on. So if, it, if it's got a short staple of only up to an inch, we can actually leave it because they want to be two, two and a half inches of staple. Um, and it'll take another year to get that. So it's just as well to leave the fleece on and share it on a two year cycle. Some people do like leaving their alpacas for two years, but it's not good for them in a way. I mean, a young animal that's producing a lot of fleece, they don't shed their fleece if they're not shorn. They just get bigger and bigger. And I have had animals that haven't been shorn for three years, and they look like giant, God knows what, monsters. And when they're shorn off, they end up being skinny little alpacas again. They just grow fleece, these animals. They're, they're not great meat-producing animals. They're not really bred for meat. Let's cover this one's ears up. Um, but as the people do ask, you can eat them. Um, they're not eaten in this country in any big way, but they are edible. Shh, you're all right, you're safe. Um, and it does taste good, I hate to say. I have tried it. Um, it's very good. You're all right, we're going to lift you off. Are you all right with that? I just want to lay there and sleep. There you go. <laughs> in a pillow. There you go, look. Anyone think we've sedated the <laughs> But we haven't, I can assure you. Can we get one that's a bit more feisty? I'll no, we'll have that one off there. Right, we'll just take it off. Oh, I'm not sure if you've done that now. I think I've got the I know There you go. And they say there's about two months growth back on this animal already from when it was shorn. Yeah. Um, which, you know, you could say it doesn't look... Yeah, that will get twice the size of that easy next year. I'd cut two and a half inches of staple off that next year. Um, but there's enough on there to protect that now, that animal, for the winter. You know, if that was to rain now, that animal, it will run off that animal like a, a thatch is, and it would just literally run off, and the rain would not penetrate to the skin. If, you, if this rains, or we pour a bucket of water over this animal, it will not soak it through. They're incredible how they keep the rain out of them. No, they don't. Well brought up. Now, lanolin, if anyone knows what lanolin is. No? Lanolin is sheep's fleece, but they don't have it in alpaca fleece. Now, a lot of people think, oh god, lanolin, but it's amazing stuff. You know, it's, it's like butter. On a hot day, it melts into a sheep's fleece and makes it easier to shear. On a cold day, it's like butter. You can't put a knife through butter on a cow when it's cold. So, it's totally different. And the only problem is they roll in dust and dirt, which makes it really hard on our shearing equipment. Whereas with sheep, with the lanolin in it, it lubricates the machine, which all helps. Um, but lanolin again, if you rub lanolin on your hands um, and then wash them, it's, just, it's in soap and it brings your hands up as clean as a whistle. We don't get that with alpacas, it's a real shame. But that's why they are more waterproof, they literally are like a thatch. Whereas sheep act as a bit of a sponge, they take the water into the surface of their skin. Um, uh, but that's, uh, that's a little bit about that. Anyone else got any questions? Still silent. <laughs> right, we're going to do another talk in, and we'll stick to it this time. Yeah. Um,